I guess the main one that we'll talk about, we'll talk about some other Canadian stuff as well, but this is uh, one I think that matters and is worth covering. So one of the original organizers uh, of the, like, that had the GoFundMe set up was arrested. Y'all saw this. And now this person in Canada is being denied bail. Also, they could face potentially a very long prison sentence. Controversial move on Tuesday. Judge in Ottawa, covering this from Blaze News, denied bail for a leading organizer of the Freedom Convoy, trucker claiming she presents a, a substantial likelihood to reoffend. The decision immediately garnered attention across uh, Canada as critics noted that even alleged violent offenders in some cases are granted bail. Yet to Merrill Lynch, Leach, Leach, whatever it is, Tamara, a 47-year-old mother and activist from Alberta, won't be afforded those options. And she was arrested and charged Thursday with counseling to commit mischief after being after having raised $10 million, uh, through a sense hall to go fund me campaign sponsoring a groundswell protest over the national COVID-19 vaccine mandates and other restrictions placed on truckers and operating or operating in Canada for weeks. Thousands of protesters camped out in Canada's capital city in Ottawa along the border crossings and, and along the border crossings uh, with U S of course, they were wanting those restrictions lifted and in her ruling on Tuesday, Ontario court justice, Julie, uh, oh, what a name. Basically, her name is Bourgeois. Uh, uh, said, <laughs> said she was not convinced that she will go home quietly and discontinue her counseling activity if released on bond. I cannot be reassured that if I release you into the community, you will not reoffend. According to Ottawa Citizen, your detention is necessary for the protection and safety of the public. So some 47-year-old woman, because she's been part of a protest that was got a lot of hype and a lot of noise and shook some shit up, can't have that. So uh, you will be not granted bail. This community has already been act impacted enough by some of the criminal activities and blockades you took part in and even led. You have plenty of opportunity to remove yourself or you've had plenty of opportunity to remove yourself and even uh, others from this criminal activity, but you chose not to. In Canada, every citizen can certainly disagree and protest against the government decisions, but it needs to be done in, in a democratic fashion. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, and abides with the laws and have that have been established democratically it's so funny to watch that term be thrown around so loosely by everybody democratic and as if somehow dem democracy is good i spoke about this many many times uh, it's a bad thing objectively speaking uh so she is scheduled to return to court on march the 2nd following the bail denial uh and it says that there's no doubt here on conviction, you are certainly facing a potentially a lengthy term. And that was what I believe uh, Tamara's attorney had said. She also claimed that her bank account was frozen under a sweeping measure known as the Emergency Act invoked by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau last week. Okay. I don't want to go too much into detail about the last video that we had did. And I talked about how all of it, a lot of these people talked to Benjamin Dictor that are part of this were naive to think that police military folk were going to be on their side with this shit. And when they told them stick them, that's exactly what the fuck they did. And now you have someone that is now in being denied bill, so she's going to remain detained and potentially is going to face a very long prison sentence. And I wouldn't be surprised if 
that does happen because remember you dealing with these judges and it's just not much different in America where they will make an example of you because they want to deter you for, from not, you know, from not just from you from doing it again, but mainly from you sort of inciting other people and influencing other people, encouraging other people to do something like this. See the, the thing that was, that the state found most offensive to them, which is what this is all about. This has nothing to do with any of the other bullshit or buzz terms they like to use. This has everything to do with this. This was an organized protest against the state. And objectively, the state is in the wrong here by having such mandates that are acts of aggression upon other people, okay? And what they are offended and so offended at is that there was something you don't generally see this in Canada, especially where a bunch of folks said enough is enough. And we're going to do what we can in our capacity to do something. They can't have that. They don't like that. They feel like it delegitimizes them and they will make an example of them. And the same folks that you thought were on your side, particularly again, law enforcement, military are going to be the ones facilitating this whole shit. We know the Ottawa police have been, bragging essentially about this they've long said had a, a little one of those press conferences or whatever the other day and they're saying that they're going to find people they're going to punish them criminalize them people that were participating in this convoy and all of that people were never on your side um, i could have told you that and i've been telling you that but remember people are naive they have the world that they th want it to be, not the world that it actually is. They don't want to acknowledge that. And then you get shit like this happening. Um, I hate and I feel for, I hate that something like this happens. And I feel for certainly all of those involved because, you know, your intentions were legitimately good. We cannot forget that these guys are the aggressors. Tr Trudeau's minions, known as the police, uh, and all those guys who basically punish people who try to avoid acts of aggression. That's what this is all about. They don't want you avoiding acts of aggression. And then they are so arrogant that they spend it acting like you are doing something to them. You're punishing them because you would dare to put your hands up and block or attempt to block a punch that they're about to throw at you. They get offended at that. These are some of the most evil people. We're going to talk about Trudeau a little later. And some of the crazy shit that he said. But these are some of the most evil people. But in order for this stuff to truly stop, a lot of these like groups that have the numbers are going to have to first acknowledge that you are dealing with a different animal. And until you acknowledge the landscape for what it actually is, which is going to put you in conflict with the police and the military, you can't come up with any given solution because you're going in essentially blind and you, all those folks you thought were going to walk hand in hand with you, they did uh, one of two things. They were the ones themselves kneeing you in the fucking face, dragging you out of them trucks, or they did absolutely nothing to prevent them from doing so. So they're not as good as you thought they were. You just listened to a clip from my podcast, For Cannon's Sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash YoungRipper59 and Odyssey.com slash at YoungRipper59. Be sure to check out my website, EricDJuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.